Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today, nothing special, nothing elaborate. And matter of fact, I probably won't even teach you anything, but I know one thing, we're gonna make a breakfast burrito and it should knock your socks off. You guys stay tuned. All right, so out of as many different ways that this recipe or the idea can come, this is just my version, just my concoction, okay? Um, chorizo, love it, absolutely love it, love it, love it. Any breakfast meat will do. Heck, even country ham will do. But I'm going with a little kind of like a Hispanic, Spanish style flair today, okay? I've got pico, I've got dang guacamole. Now let me tell you something, don't make fun of my pre-made stuff. Dang avocados there at the grocery store at $1.67 nope. each. They were two fifty. Two fifty each. Each? Yes. What the heck? So we got this thing for two and a half dollars. It's already pre-made. So we actually eat it a lot, so I know I like it. Alright, this is the deal. Somebody commented a long time ago and I cannot find the comment. This is my hash brown casserole. The reason why it looks like this, because this is how we froze it when we made it. There's a recipe. You guys can check the link out, the video, self-plug. It's basically the idea of like a Cracker Barrel style hash brown casserole. And we did that in like little bitty cakes. Well, I had some left over and this is the first time using it. So in the description below, I'm gonna link that video or at least the date of the video. I don't even know when we made the video. So this is the leftover video and we had it yesterday just to test out this recipe. You couldn't even taste it. It was frozen for X amount of months. I know it's been multiple months. So anyways, all right. Chorizo sausage, got a little uh, peppers and onions, got some eggs, just some simple shredded cheese, and I love my dang hot sauce. You can use salsa, but since we're having the pico and the guacamole, I thought a little bit of hot sauce. I tried to find those big old dang burritos and make a big old whopping burrito, but all we got were these little jokers, burrito size, all right? The wind is blowing 743 miles an hour, so if it gets loud or obnoxious, I'm not refilming. We're just going with it. All right, here we go. Just a tad of butter, don't need a lot. We start our peppers and onion sauteing. I've already went into my trezo, split the casing. Now I have used trezo in the past, actually several times. But I found that the chorizo itself gets like really, um, what did you just call it, honey? Broken up, granulated, not granulated. Crumbly? Cr like, yeah, but like small crumbly, almost like mush crumbly. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This I found, um, the Johnsonville style, they stay in their form. So like if you cut them up in little chunks or something like that, it seems like they stay together instead of just coming like a, like a, a mush style. I'm going to cheat a list. Cheat a little bit so we can't get this bad boy up a little bit. We're just looking to get some color and some tenderness on our vegetables. It doesn't really need to be overcooked. You guys cook it to the doneness that you like. And for the sausages, I'm just gonna keep rotating them. I'm gonna end up cutting them in small medallions. I'm just using my spatula. Go ahead and cut them in chunks. I'm just moving everything over. I'm gonna use that trezo grease right here just for a good landing spot for these hash browns. I do want some color on them. I think it goes a long ways. People ask me about, uh, I guess you know what we could do. We have a playlist up called sides and I did uh, country fried potatoes. This would be a perfect side. You can make these ahead of time, freeze them. Man, you can have them with anything you want to. I think we actually had them with, uh, what did we have them with? Country fried steak or chicken? One of the other ones. I'm just spreading them out, trying to get some color on them. Nothing major, warming them back up. Uh, here, really quick, you guys can comment below. We do have extra chorizo, and uh, my wife said, ooh, we should make our your, your favorite. She always gets nachos. There's not a time that I've ever seen her not get nachos. <laughs> but I get the whole menu. Whatever it is, I feel, I mean, like. At Mexican restaurants. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't order the whole menu, but every time I go, I try to get something different just to try. Um, but one of my favorite dishes is either steak or chicken. So they'll do like a chicken breast. They'll take the chorizo, put it on top of it, pour the cheese dip over top of it, serve it with just like your little side salad, guacamole, uh, pico, sour cream, and then we'll have it with uh, rice and beans. So if you guys want to make that, like maybe a weird concoction or something like that, just comment below because we got some left. 
and I'll need to know pretty quick. Need a chorizo idea. Peppers and onions starting to get some char to them. That's just about where I want to take them. They're not so soft where they're just mush. They still got some texture. And then personally, I know the way they do it at my favorite Mexican restaurant. I'm going to wait to get a little char on there. You see that? That's what I'm looking for. I love it when they got some char on there. So I'm going to keep letting these bad boys go. And then for here, this is going to test your... Probably should have put some oil down, but it's all right. Just getting one of those warmed up. All right, if you notice, I've mentioned it several times before, but just to recap, so my potatoes were kind of over here. I kind of lost track of the flow of the flat top. You see all the gook I got up off the flat top? Well, if you don't clean as you go and start scraping and moving stuff over when you put your eggs down, they're going to stick. It does not matter how uh, non-stick your flat top is, eggs will stick to fond. Basically, fond is just food bits left over on the on the bottom. It will definitely stick to proteins and the sugars and stuff. Like you wouldn't think so, but the onions and peppers have tons of sugar and that's how they start caramelizing. So when that's left over on your flat top, that's how your eggs stick, okay? So you probably didn't see that because we cut it out of the video, but I've already cleaned it up. I've already added my avocado oil. So now I've got a clean surface. So now what we're gonna do is even clean my spatula. Because once again, I'm trying to create that flavor profile that's separate. So I don't want the eggs to have all the same flavors as everything else. I will say this, I won't say anything when I cook the eggs, they are gonna go super fast. Why? Because I want them soft. I do not want my eggs overcooked to be stuck in a burrito that's just gonna keep steaming and overcooking. So my eggs are gonna look like they're runny. They're not, I promise. They're gonna set up over here on the side while the other stuff's still cooking. So it's gonna happen pretty fast. No salt, no pepper because everything is so heavily seasoned already, I didn't want to overdo it. All right, you ready? Yep. Nice little pat of butter. seconds one way if you're ever worried about eggs cook an extra egg if you always have to to keep them for the next day but you definitely don't want to like spread your eggs out completely super thin like an omelet and expect fluffy light moist eggs the flatter your eggs get the drier it gets in a hurry so that's why I added four eggs not three for us and also you can tell that it's still super moist I didn't overcook them but they're going to continue to steam in this little thing right here so Look at all the little nice brown bits. Oh yeah, we got a lot more color. See that? That's what I was looking for the first time. That's perfect. All right, the flat top's off. All of our ingredients are ready. I'm just gonna bring them over here really quick, warm them up. And then I guess when I'm done with the residual heat, woo, I'm going to uh, just put them back on here really quick and toast them. Talking about a good way to clean your flat top. Look at all that flavor. <sighs> all right. 
So my idea first, a little bit of the hash brown casserole. All right, the potatoes are down. Come back in here with a little bit of citrizo. Obviously, you're going to add as much as you like, but careful now. This thing can only hold so much. Our hash brown casserole already had cheese in it, so I'm not going to overdo the cheese. Little peppers and onions. Ooh. Look how moist some eggs are. Somebody goes, oh, they're undercooked. No, they're not. Mmm. If you know me, you know I like a little hot sauce. You want some on yours? Nope. And then. Some of that freshness right there. All right, last trick I'll show you. Man, we've, we have rolled a gazillion wraps. All right, you want to shape a V, okay? Fold the wings, shape the V. If you have it straight, it might not work, so shape the V. Bring your bottom up. Come on, baby. Tuck in the sides. That boy's overfilled. And just like that. Seal that edge. All right, here we go. The V. Fold it up. Tuck in your sides. There we go. See that? Look how tight that burrito is. See that? That way when you pick it up, you don't have the ingredients falling out the back end. See, I did teach you something today. Even when I said I wasn't going to. All right, just a little toasty. Nothing major. Cut in till and see what we got. Oh yeah. All right guys, there you go. Hey, super simple, super easy. Maybe I did teach you a thing or two about folding that burrito. Mm. I already know what it tastes like. I know it tastes freaking delicious with that hash brown casserole in there. There you go, guys. Something easy, packed with flavor, minimal effort. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Don't forget to comment below. Pound that notification button. Share it with your friends. Peace.